When you see a team win the championship, or a team that reaches the conference finals, or teams that just simply had a fantastic record in the previous season, yet when they heavily drop off after a successful season, it's always a surprise. We've seen it happen in the past, obviously, but that's usually because something major happens. A team loses their superstar, or some major injuries occur. For these teams though, that's not the case. They were fantastic a year ago, but now they're struggling, despite having very similar rosters as before. Early on, we could blame it on a slow start, but it's 60 games into the season now, so this is who they are. It's been a rather disappointing season for them. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and let's get started. The Toronto Raptors a year ago, the Raptors finished the 2021-22 season with a record of 48-34, and smack dab in the middle of the playoff ranks and a dark horse contender. Fast forward a year later, and now they've been struggling the entire season to get above 500, and they're having a losing season, despite having almost the same roster as the year before. I mean, before the season started, this Raptors team was projected to win 50 games, and now they're not going to come close to that number. What changed? Well, the first issue has been their regression on defense. Previously a top 10 defensive team, the Raptors have hovered around a bottom 10 defense for most of the season. This has been examined extensively by many NBA journalists. Their issues stem from a lack of cohesion. Just from watching, the Raptors are scrambling a lot on defense. Players are a step slow to get to their spots, and even a split second can make all the difference. This year, their players are also gambling a lot more out on the perimeter. This is attributed to the fact that they don't have any big man who's capable of protecting the rim. That means their wings and guards have to overcompensate and play more aggressively further away from the basket, to make sure their opponent doesn't get to the rim. This has been Nick Nurse's game plan, but it's led to some mixed results. Sometimes their defense can be suffocating. Other times, if the opposing team just has too many offensive threats, they're not going to stop anyone. Some defensive numbers don't paint the Raptors in a good light. They're 22nd in defensive rebounding, and 26th in opposing free throw rate. Basically, this means they're struggling to secure rebounds and they're fouling too much, both of which are symptoms of not having a reliable presence in the paint. With the acquisition of Jakob Pertl, that's certainly going to help, but it's too early to tell how much he's going to help. It's nice having a capable center again, but can he resolve their defensive woes? The next issue is simply that their players, especially their young guys, did not make the jump that we expected. Scotty Barnes had a fantastic rookie season, but for most of this year, he's been going through a sophomore slump. Of course, he's still good, still the guy the Raptors hope will take over the franchise in the future, but he didn't improve in the way they wanted him to. Same with OG Ananobi and Gary Trent. Both young guys in their mid-twenties who aren't playing much better compared to last season. Nick Nurse was asked repeatedly about the Raptors' inconsistency this year on offense, and he pretty much gives the same answer every single time. Quote, We don't run our offense with enough energy and pace. That translated directly to our defense energy and movements. We've got a bunch of accountability factors that we look at and we take into consideration. Even those you can score very high on and not have the greatest energy in the world. I think the energy vibe is certainly off, no doubt about it. He's mentioned energy multiple times, but what he really means is a lack of effort. I think the accountability he's talking about stems from money. A handful of young guys on this team are playing for their next contract. So whenever that happens, you can tell the players play differently. They want to play differently, they might want more touches or a bigger role, things like that always affect chemistry. Fred Van Vliet and Gary Trent both have player options and are looking for a big extension. OG Ananobi has been in trade rumors for a long time and he also wants a near max deal when the time comes. You add on a couple of nagging injuries at the start of the year and that compounded their chemistry issues even further. All these factors have led to quite a mediocre season from the Raptors. There's so much talent on this team, a lot of high potential players who could break out into a star at any given moment. But that time hasn't come yet. And if they keep playing like this, perhaps it never will come. It's more likely they'll break up this team as opposed to overpaying to keep this team together. The Golden State Warriors 
I'm never somebody who's gonna doubt a team that's won the championship the previous year. However, there's only been 5 other teams in NBA history that missed the playoffs after reaching the finals in the previous year. Those teams are the 1999 Chicago Bulls, the 2005 Los Angeles Lakers, the 2015 Miami Heat, the 2019 Cleveland Cavaliers, and the 2020 Golden State Warriors. One thing all these teams have in common is that they lost a major superstar over the summer. Plus, Clay got injured. This time though, the Warriors won the title with almost an identical roster to the one they have now. Not much has changed. Except their record. They've been a 500 team for the entire season, though it's kinda weird. Their current home record of 22-7 is as good as most of the top teams in the league, but their abysmal 7-22 away record is shockingly bad. I don't know what to think of them, but I can only break down what we have seen. And what I see is a team that went from having the number one defense in the league to having a putrid defense. They're at bottom 10 defense now. Though their offense has been better because Steph has bounced back in a huge way, but defense is the central issue here. Draymond has talked about this all year long and he's attributed this to a lack of trust. The trust issues have been a low-key problem amongst the team. Similar to the Raptors, the Warriors have been a step slow getting to their spots, mostly due to lack of communication. Arguments have been common within the locker room. A Western Conference executive has recently stated the aftermath of Draymond's punch on Jordan Poole has had a long-lasting impact in the locker room. You talk to people there, and the whole thing still is sitting over the whole team. The camaraderie is not the same. The way guys open up to one another, that is not there. And you can't force it to be there. You talk to guys who have been there a while, and there is a coldness that that team does not usually have. You can tell from the body language that there's a certain level of tension among the players. The lack of cohesion has spread throughout the locker room, but it's kind of been masked due to Steph's incredible play. This team sort of gives me the same vibes as the 2020-21 roster that barely missed the playoffs. Steph had a brilliant year, but the rest of the team had some major issues. Like the Raptors, there's also some guys playing for their next contract, so they're trying to get in their shots. With that being said, I'm never going to doubt the Warriors in a playoff setting. If they make the playoffs, that is. The Chicago Bulls The Bulls are another team that had a tremendous start last season. You know, when DeRozan was going off and the Bulls had a massive winning streak. The thing is, people knew that was not sustainable. DeRozan, throughout his career, has always had stretches like this. Stretches of games where he dominates, where he looks unstoppable. But eventually, he will regress. Still, the Bulls managed to finish the year with a 46-36 record, and solidified their spot in the playoffs. This season, however, it's been a roller coaster, but there's been way more lows than highs. They're not even in the playoff conversation. Their offense has gotten significantly worse, mostly because DeRozan and Levine aren't as good as they were last year. But the most important difference between this year and last is the absence of Lonzo Ball. I mentioned earlier in this video that I would talk about teams that didn't have any major roster changes, but this is a major change. Obviously, it's not the only cause for the Bulls' struggles, but I wanted to talk about them anyway. With Lonzo Ball missing, their perimeter defense has taken a huge hit. I don't think people realize how important Lonzo was to their offense as well. Without him, the Bulls really don't have a designated passer. Lonzo's court vision is miles better than anyone else's on the team so their lackadaisical offense can be attributed to his absence. You can see it last season as well. When Lonzo got injured midway through the season, the Bulls struggled towards the end of the year. Plus, Lonzo was also shooting the ball incredibly well prior to his injury. The dude was hitting 42% of his threes on over 7 attempts per game. That was by far his best shooting season of his career. And he also perfected playing off the ball, which really complemented DeRozan and Levine so well. To make matters worse, their young lottery picks in recent years, Patrick Williams and Kobe White, aren't making much progress. Especially White, who's probably the most inconsistent player on the roster. The Bulls put themselves in this hole, and I don't think they can climb out. At one point, they were trying to build up their team organically, accumulating draft picks and slowly developing their players. However, by trading for DeMar DeRozan and Nikola Vucevic, they had to give up three first-round picks. One of those picks became Franz Wagner, who's been balling out in Orlando. 
The other two picks are yet to be seen. The Bulls essentially try to accelerate their rebuild and create this, I guess, star-studded roster to try and contend immediately, but it failed. It's a rough time for Chicago, as the present and future is looking bleak. Anyway, that's all folks. Those were three NBA teams who saw a major drop-off from the season prior. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you see any of these teams turning it up as the season comes to a close? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.